and welcome to the Cyber Patriot 15 National Finals Competition. My name is Rachel Zimmerman and I'm the Senior Director of Business Operations and Cyber Patriot National Commissioner. I want to start by congratulating each of the 28 teams here today that qualified for the National Finals. You should all be extremely proud of yourselves for this tremendous accomplishment. In 2008, the Board of Directors for the Air and Space Forces Association recognized the need for more students to pursue STEM education and careers, and they asked, what can AFA do to help solve that problem? Their solution was Cyber Patriot, and in 2009, at an, Air and, an AFA conference in Orlando, Florida, Cyber Patriot was launched with eight teams of local students. When I joined the program in 2010, we were the National High School Cyber Defense Competition. We had just established the open division, allowing non-junior ROTC students to join the competition, and 600 teams and over 1,000 students registered to compete in CP3. Over the years, the program has grown, and at the start of this season, we had over 5,000 teams and 20,000 competitors at both the middle school and high school level compete in the 15th season of the National Youth Cyber Defense Competition. We've also expanded beyond the competition to include a cyber camp program, programs at the elementary school level that teach cyber safety, programs to help keep senior citizens safe online, and an alumni network to keep past competitors engaged with the program. We have an exciting event planned for you over the next few days. We are about to hear from some key individuals who want to help welcome you to the Cyber Patriot National Finals competition. And then we will jump into competition orientation and system familiarization. Later today, we will have sponsor representatives here to speak to you to get you thinking about the future beyond high school. Tomorrow, we will have the main event, the Network Security Master Challenge, the Cisco Netacad Challenge, and the Boeing Cyber Physical Systems Challenge. We will then wrap up the finals on Monday, where we will crown the winners at the Cyber Patriot 15 Awards Banquet. To start the opening ceremony, I'm going to turn it over to General Orville Wright, President and CEO of the Air and Space Forces Association. Wow, well, good morning. And thank you, Rachel, for uh, a short, fortunately kind uh, introduction and a very hearty, heartfelt welcome to all of you. It's inspirational just to see you out there this morning. Spring is a time of renewal, and the United States of America looking at you is on a great track, an accelerating vector upward, if you will. It's a blessing uh, for me personally and professionally to be here at the Cyber Patriot National Finals Competition. That would be National Finals Competition, as in the entire United States. So, wow again. So on behalf of our chairman, Bernie Scotch, and my friend Bernie for, for many years, who really is the founder of this incredible competition, it's an honor and I'm proud to be standing here with all of you in the midst of unmatched creativity, ingenuity, and just pure enthusiasm in the room. It's just great news to see you this morning. I want to start by extending also a sincere thank you to our AFA team. Rachel, over the years, and I know Bernie would say the same thing, you've been the mastermind behind all things Cyber Patriot, and we couldn't have done it without you. To Stu Pettis, um, a relatively recent uh, director of all our STEM programs, including Cyber Patriot and Stellar Explorers, uh, Stu is also uh, a retired Air Force senior officer and a graduate of our weapons school with a huge uh, technology background in both space and air and certainly cyber. So, Stu, Rachel, your leadership and support for the overall direction of our STEM education programs has truly propelled our AFA mission forward. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention again the foundation has been laid by our chairman, our current chairman of the board for the Air and Space Forces Association, Bernie Scotch. Bernie, for your leadership your intellect, your vision to build our Cyber Patriot program to what it is today. Thank you, sir, so much. In fact, Bernie, thank you.
He, he hates this, by the way, so I'm teasing him. Yeah, he, uh, he's way humble. So it's fun to thank him. To our educational partners, we are grateful for your support and our alliance. We know that our partnership is integral to events and activities like the ones we have today. And I'd like to specifically thank Dr. Phyllis Skank, Northrop Grumman, Cindy DeCarlo from Cisco, Dr. Greg White, University of Texas, San Antonio, David Loy from Boeing. Thank you very much. Our industry partners are just so foundational to what we do. We can't do it without you. Um, and oh, by the way, it's an opportunity for all of you as Cyber Patriot competitors to talk to senior leaders in our defense industry. Um, and they probably will encourage you to at least look at a career uh, with, a, with one of our, our industry partners. Now, when I look out at the crowd, I can only think of one word, promise. I can tell all of you are fired up, ready to go, and we love it. You truly are America's future, and what you're doing in cyber is not only remarkable, but as you all know, much needed by our nation. So I want to emphasize that point. We need you. We need your creativity, your ideas, your willingness to share, and your boldness. You are already cyber patriots, and the name says it all. A dedication to not only cyber, but to being something, doing something, bigger than yourselves. I also want to remind everyone of the why, why we are here today. Cyber has become increasingly vital and it is a national security imperative. Cyber security, cyber operations. What we are doing through our cyber camps and our various competitions is fueling your great ideas and creating the space for the change that our nation needs so much. As you go out beyond this competition to fulfill those roles in our society, I want to thank you again. Our youth, you all in advance for all your hard work and most of all, your service at such a relatively early time in your lives to be here committed and to make the decision to be here, the commitment to compete makes me believe so much even more in this wonderful nation, uh, this miracle that is the United States of America. So I know your work will inspire, it'll inspire through the competition, it'll inspire across the nation as you show us all what it means to pursue the art of discovery, and most of all, just have fun. Thanks very much. It's an honor to be here with you. Thank you, General Wright. Um, I will echo a thanks to Bernie Scott, who was the National Commissioner of Cyber Patriot before me. Um, all the programs I mentioned earlier that we expanded to, um, those were all Bernie's ideas. Bernie's a lot of things, and an avid runner is one of them. Um, and he trains for marathons, and so he would go for runs, and Bex and I would hear, stop by my office. I had a great idea last night while on a run, and that's how we got children's books, and that's how we got Cyber Generations and other programs. Next up to welcome you to the final is Dr. Phyllis Schneck, Vice President and Chief Information Security Officer for North of Grumman. Good morning. Are we excited? Come on, give it up. I really do want to echo thanks to Stuart Pettis for your, your leadership, uh, to General Wright, um, to Mr. Scott, who I just had the pleasure of meeting and had no idea all of that background before I met you, sir, today. To Rachel for coordinating. Um, I'm here today from Northrop Grumman. We are so proud of all of you. If you think about a March Madness bracket, don't know what you were watching on TV last night, but you came from over 5,000 teams to 28. If anybody could not map that, think about just being in the room today. Think about the journey you've taken. Uh, I won't say that I'm that old, but when I was your age, cyber was not a thing. And you're making it our future. And it's so critical what we're doing here. I do wanna thank uh, our, our teams back at Northrop Grumman. And I wanna tell you that, I'll talk a little bit about my role in a moment, but to echo what the general said, we need you every day 
to protect the things that are the new technology that's being created, the legacy technology that you all know how to penetrate, uh, the combination of that technology, and to build the ideas yet to come more secure to protect the way of life in this great country. I also want to thank all the other companies and all the people, the thousands of people, likely at this point across the country, that it takes to support you in all of your schools and to support this program. I think what we're building here is a collection of ideas of the fact that this is not only cool, it's necessary. I heard earlier that cyber has now become a sport or akin to a sport in some of the top schools. Congratulations on that. And I really want to impress on you how great it is that you're here today, how impressive each and every one of you are, and that as we look at our different roles in cybersecurity, while it used to be, can I execute code of mine on somebody else's, it's way beyond that now. And as we look at our different skill sets in being able to, whether you're getting into memory or whether you're doing it some other way, side channel, or you're creating attacks or you're pen testing or you're gaming it, think about it's beyond cyber. And what you're learning here is leadership and camaraderie and teamwork and a year over year program and growth and celebration, winning and losing, competition, and those skills will follow you, and they will make you and our country and our world more competitive on the things we're trying to protect and all the good technology we're trying to bring. I want to also thank everybody in here who's served in the military, is in the military, or is about to enter the military for your service. So a round of applause for that. That is a key part of what drives us. If I could leave you with one word today, I'm also going to echo what the general said, but fun. Love every minute of this because your passion and what makes you strong, you're going to be best at what you most enjoy doing. And I want everybody to stop at least once over the next couple of days and think, just take a step back and think, wow, look where I am. Because you'll want to capture that moment. You'll want to remember that moment. And one day when you replace my colleagues and me in our roles, you're going to think back to that moment and you will pull those skills, the fun, the teamwork, the camaraderie, the ability to pull humor in the biggest of tense situations, and you will be the hugest success. So I don't want to stand between you and great competition. Have a wonderful couple of days and go cyber. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Schneck, and thank you, Northrop Grumman and the Northrop Grumman Foundation for your continued and tremendous support of Cyber Patriot over the years. Um, the next person that we're going to have speak to you um, is one of the few people who can say that they were there at Cyber Patriot 1 um, and are still involved here at Cyber Patriot 15, and that's Dr. Greg White from the Director of Center for Infrastructure Assurance and Security at the University of Texas San Antonio. Rachel said they lost my 30 point or 30 slide presentation, so I guess I'll have to do something a little bit shorter. And, and as a professor at the university, we're normally used to speaking in 50 minute increments, and I promised her I would try to cut that back just a little bit as well. Um, at the University of Texas at San Antonio, we also run, by the way, in case folks did not know this, uh, I was told to make sure that you understand that this is not the end. If you're a senior and you're going to be graduating, there's a collegiate version of this competition as well, the National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. So you have that to look forward to when you go off to college. Make sure you go to a college that's got a team. And if it doesn't have a team, start one, you know. And it, it, we've, we've seen the impact of Cyber Patriot in the National Collegiate Competition, the cyber, uh, cyber Security Competition as well, because uh, we've seen teams that were formed by, uh, in fact, the University of Virginia a few years ago had uh, several Cyber Patriot alum. There was no University of Virginia team. They got together. They said, we want to do this, this, continue doing this competition thing. And they ended up taking first place that year at the national championship, the collegiate side, because of their Cyber Patriot alumni that, that, that uh, participated. Um, just a, a, a point a lot of folks don't uh, rec or realize, we actually, that's at the collegiate cyber defense competition, we've been running it just a little bit longer than uh, 15. We're going on like 18 years now. Um, we tried running the year before AFA got involved with Cyber Patriot and started Cyber Patriot. We tried running a high school competition 
at the same time we're trying to do the collegiate one, it didn't work out. Um, we had to, we dropped back and just went with the collegiate version because we saw that the high school one was going to be a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, you folks, we just, I just need to mention how grateful I am for the Air Force Association and for all of the folks who, all the people, Rachel and General Scotch, uh, General Wright, the whole team, Northrop Grumman couldn't do it. We owe them all a tremendous round of applause because without them, this would not have happened. And believe me, this takes a lot of work to put together. Like I said, we backed off of it. They said, it's too much work for us. We're not doing it. Uh, and then AFA, you know, came along a year later and said, hey, what about this idea? And uh, they picked up and have run with it and it's phenomenal. So a round of applause to all of the AFA. And their sponsors. Okay, so I've, I've gone off script here. I did have a couple of things I wanted to say. Thank you for mentioning the March Madness. You know, I wanted to talk about that too. It's think about that. There are actually 358 Division One schools, 358 Division One schools, and they come together. You know, they compete, and a select few of those uh, actually get to go to this March Madness NCAA tournament. There were 2,500 open division schools or teams, you know, registered. There were 1,500 service division teams. There were almost 900 middle school teams. So if you look at it statistically, you have a better chance of getting to the NCAA at a basketball team than you folks did of coming here. And, and you need to recognize, recognize that. Um, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, also another little uh, number, if you want to look at it, Every one of those team members, there's what, 5,300 uh, collegiate players in basketball, Division One. Every one of them would love to go to this thing called the NBA. There's only 450 active on the roster, active rosters, players in the NBA, 450. That's not a lot. Compare that with what you folks are facing. There are currently 755,000 open unfilled cybersecurity positions. Let me repeat that, 755,000 open positions. So <laughs> we finally flip around here and there are a lot more <laughs> open positions than there are NBA position uh, for individuals. You folks, if you're interested in a cybersecurity job, you can get one, whether that's working for the government, whether that's working for industry, doesn't matter. There are positions out there. And what would you be doing in some of those positions? Maybe you'll be protecting the nation. Take a look at what we've got uh, going on in Russia and the Ukraine right now. 58% of the hostile um, nation state attacks that occur around the world come from Russia, 58%. If you take a look at what Russia did in the first few days and continue to do in the Ukraine, they attacked cyber-wise, they attacked the critical infrastructures, power. They went after telecommunications, financial services. They attacked the media. They attacked uh, industry. And they even went after nonprofit organizations. But the U.S., we're, gotta be, well, we're much better off than the Ukraine, right? Colonial pipeline. Two words here. Let me just mention that. If you don't know about Colonial Pipeline, it's a part of the critical infrastructure, oil and gas. It got hit with ransomware. And what happened when it got hit with the ransomware? Gas shortage on the East Coast as a result of that critical infrastructure getting hit. And what did it get hit by? Ransomware. In the time that I'm up here talking to you folks today, there will be 30 companies that will be hit by ransomware. On the average, there is a ransomware attack on a company every 11 seconds. That's a lot of ransomware attacks. You could be involved in helping to protect your organization, whatever that organization may be, protect them from an, a ransomware attack. You can help them protect them from data breaches. 95% of the data breaches that occur out there occur as a result of human error. Someone does something they're not supposed to, you know, they fall for a phishing attack, or maybe it's an administrator who misconfigures a firewall. 95% of them, you folks can make a difference in that. You can go out there and make sure people don't misconfigure their firewalls and their systems and help protect them. The average loss to ransomware 500 in terms of payment, for average payment, 570,000. The average data breach loss, 4.24 million. There's a lot 
of money being lost as a result of cybersecurity attacks. Um, I, I probably run out of my time. <laughs> and so I, I'll go ahead and finish here, but just encourage you folks to think about a career. For, and even if you don't think about a career, if not planning on going into cybersecurity, it doesn't matter. You as an individual who knows something about cybersecurity, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what organization you get hired by, whether it's government, industry, doesn't matter. I guarantee absolutely positively you're going to be working with computers and you can make a difference in their cybersecurity. So congratulations for being here. Uh, congratulations to, the, to uh, the participants, the team members, the coaches, the teachers, the parents. There wouldn't be a competition without you folks either. Uh, so enjoy yourselves, as been mentioned. Enjoy yourselves over the next few days. And I once again congratulate you on arriving here and being part of this uh, national championship. Thank you, Dr. White, for condensing that 50-minute presentation into a few minutes. Um, and to echo what you said, you know, I was at a gas station a few years ago that didn't have gas because of the Colonial Pipeline. So we, we do need that everywhere. Um, next up to welcome you is uh, Dave Lowey from the, the Director of Classified Cybersecurity from the Boeing Industry Enterprise Security. <laughs> Okay. Good morning, everybody. I am absolutely excited to be here. This is my first opportunity to address a group like yours with Cyber Patriot. Uh, I was invited about a month ago um, to give this uh, opening remarks for the Boeing company. And I have to tell you, um, we as a company are extremely excited to continue to sponsor Cyber Patriot. And I'm excited to have this first opportunity um, to do these welcoming, re welcoming remarks on behalf of the Boeing company. Um, you've already heard from my colleagues um, about the opportunities that are out there for all of you, and also the threats that you will face out there if you choose to come into a cyber career field. What I would like to do is expound upon that a little bit in terms of what are those types of opportunities that are out there for you. Um, by doing that, I really want to focus on what is my career been. Um, as you heard, I am the Director of Classified Cybersecurity for the Boeing Company. What exactly does that mean? When you think of traditional cybersecurity, you're probably thinking of these unclassified systems that the companies have out there. Um, interestingly enough, though, most of our companies do business with the Defense Department and also the Intelligence Company. And for the Boeing Company, this is a large part of our business. In fact, we have just under 500 classified systems and networks within the Boeing company um, supporting a wide range of various platforms that Boeing company produces um, for the Defense Department and the intelligence community. Um, in addition to what you already know about the Boeing company in terms of its um, Boeing commercial airplanes and such. So um, with that, um, we have to have cybersecurity that's specific to the classified arena. Um, that means that we have a twofold purpose. First, we are supposed to protect those particular systems for the company, keep those systems operational um, by protecting them against cyber attacks and such. Um, but in addition to that, and very important to the government that we serve, um, is protecting the classified information that they entrust us with. So we have that twofold purpose out there. So when you're thinking about a career in cybersecurity, um, think about the wide range of things that you have to do. Now, in terms of protecting those classified systems and such, and you've already heard about the various threats actors that are out there, um, whether it's nation states that are um, uh, trying to manipulate politics um, or get a military advantage, or you've got cyber criminals that are um, taking advantage of us from a financial gain standpoint. Um, we have to look at all of those kinds of things, but do it in the classified arena. And working with the government, they've identified over 2,000 um, discrete cybersecurity controls that we have to be compliant with on each of those 500 systems that we have within the company. So as you imagine, that's an enormous amount of work that we have to do in order to protect that classified information that the government's entrusting us with. So as you think about those cyber careers that are out there, um, and my colleague correctly stated, well over 700,000 of those opportunities are there, um, think broadly about the different types of things that you can be doing and consider also classified with that. 
Um, now, I know you're all excited to uh, get out there to the competition, so I'm going to keep my, uh, my comments short here. Um, I just want to congratulate all of you um, for making it to this uh, finals round of the competition. Um, we're very excited about the um, specific Boeing competition that you're going through tomorrow night and such. And uh, I just want to say thanks to all of you for your interest in cybersecurity, your passion. Um, it has been said many times already that we need you. We truly do. Um, and as you consider your future, um, obviously, I'd love for you to consider a career with the Boeing Company. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lowy. And last up to um, talk to you all is uh, Cyber Patriot Senior Director of Competition Operations, Frank Zabrowski. If you don't know him already, you're going to get to know him a lot very well over the next few days. It is now time for us to pledge once again ourselves and our teams to the foundational principles of our competition. Team captains, please stand. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. On behalf of my team, I affirm that we shall take part in the Cyber Patriot National Finals Competition. Respecting and abiding by the rules that govern the competition. I affirm that we shall consider the ethical and legal implications of our actions. Every time we participate in Cyber Patriot or other online activities. Please put down your hands. Let's have a round of applause for our team captains. Please have a seat. So ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our opening ceremony. Let's have a round of applause for all those who made Cyber Patriot possible. You are all on a break till 10.35 and we will promptly start for the competition orientation. Thank you.